Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Be Healthy and Thrive podcast. My name is Brianna from Made Well, coaching practice designed to empower others to be healthy and thrive in all areas of their life. Right? So, at the very core of the mission statement of Made Well, of my business, is to help people be healthy and thrive in all areas of their life. Right? So, on today's episode, I kind of wanted to just define that. What does it mean to be healthy and thrive? And what does it mean to be healthy and thrive in all areas of your life, of your life, right? And so this kind of goes along with like a kind of an inventory guide or training or exercise that I often do with clients and the members of the Whole Woman's Health Club, which is my membership community, kind of centered around these seven pillars we're going to talk about. And what we do on that guide uh, and that exercise is really start to identify seven main areas, but then we get down into a little bit of specifics around where do we feel most satisfied and dissatisfied? Because often when we think about health, we think about the physical body. We think about being physically healthy and physically well. And that is very, very true. If you know me, if you know what I'm about, you know that I do believe that's the foundation. And even in my own story, it wasn't until I really started kind of looking at that, uh, that I really started to even look at all the other areas of my health and my life. But I really just wanted to take this episode to really kind of break down what are my definitions uh, for the seven pillars of health? What does it mean for, what do I want to see when I interact with you or hear from you on how you are being healthy and thriving? And I'll start by saying, although it's my definition of this particular area, although these are the seven areas that I believe we all should really pay attention to, I think we all know at the core of our being what being healthy and thriving in our life is like, what we desire and what we want. But the thing is we often put that desire on a back burner. We often say, no, this is what I should do versus this is what my heart is really saying. And, you know, God's spirit is saying, this is what you should, this is the way to walk, right? So I want to remove the pressure of, of feeling like we need to fit a certain box in any of these areas, right? I, as a coach, I'm not necessarily a consultant or not necessarily a strategist. Those are definitely two of my strengths, but I'm not here to really tell you what to do. As a coach, I, of course, I can give you advice. Of course, I can make recommendations. But I often think that when I, especially when I work with my clients and when I interact with people and have conversation, People know at the core of it what they want and what they should do. It's just there's something blocking them from fully walking in that. Whether it's a mindset issue, whether it's a habits issue, whether there's an actual obstacle that is outside of their control, right? So I really want this episode to really be empowering for you. I want you to leave coming up with a sort of plan and just coming up thinking through what would it be like for you to be healthy and thrive in the seven areas that I'm talking about, right? And I'll mention a little bit around, you know, my definition of it, the different seven areas, a personal story, kind of a client uh, testimony, and then a kind of an action point for you. Uh, but be sure that you sign up for uh, updates for the Be Healthy and Thrive podcast, because when you do that, when you sign up for my mailing list, I'll send you this inventory guide, that exercise I was talking about, along with Uh, a tutorial on how to go through it, as well as seven different interviews that I have done with uh, seven different women in these particular areas, just so you can maybe identify the one or two areas you really need to start with and then listen to an interview with another woman uh, woman who is actually rocking it in that area, like that's her life's work, and really be inspired in that way. Okay, so let's kind of like go and give you a little bit of background, my context, I talked about it in the last episode, but For me, I struggled a lot in the physical health area and actually all the other areas, but the physical health was the biggest thing at the time. And I often felt hopeless and I often felt like there were so many competing thoughts that I did not know what to do. And I tried this one and that one and none of it became sustainable. But when I started to see that my physical health is actually connected to these other areas, mainly emotional, mental, spiritual those were the three other ones at the time that I really stuck to, I started to actually find a lot of freedom and victory and success in the physical health area 
when I started to look at my, my whole body and life as a whole, right? Because for me, what my main struggle was in that physical health is it wasn't, oh, I can't eat right or exercise consistently. It was the fact that there was actually a lot of stressors that was going on in my life, a lot of things that I thought about myself, I thought about the world that impacted and manifested itself in my physical health. Okay, so just know from the very beginning, I believe it's all connected. And I hope you will come away from this seeing and feeling the same, right? So kind of let's start a little bit on the main area that I think that most people think about when you think about health, and that's your physical health, right? So our bodies, whether they are, they are healthy and functioning well or not, really dictate how we show up in the world. It dictates our energy, it dictates our ability to focus, our ability to move and function, to sit, to stand, to walk, um, our ability to interact with people and be engaged with people, our ability to, to work, our ability to just to do about everything. So if our bodies are not working the way that they're designed to work at their optimal capacity, internally as well because there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes we have a lot of different systems that are so cool to study if you ever studied i i just always remember being very fascinated in health class like the cardiovascular system the skeletal skeletal people i had a teacher who said it's skeletal and i'm like for the longest time i called it skeletal system skeletal reproductive uh you know excretion digestive like there are tons of systems and they all work together which is so cool but if we are not doing our part to make sure they're all working together, it's going to show up in a lot of ways that we honestly accept as normal. So I'll give you an example. I, um, I used to think for a long time that I just had very sensitive skin. Just, and that's many people. Many people would say that too. So I just used Dove Sensitive Skin on my face. Because anything with fragrance, alarm bell right there, anything with fragrance or anything like that would make me break out. But then as I started to, you know, go deeper into my studies and just started to experiment more, I started to recognize that actually it was not me. It was what I was using. You see, often the things that we are putting on our skin, we are putting toxins on our body and in our body that overload our system and our system is designed to help, you know, to remove um, all of our toxins. But when it's overwhelmed, it can't. And so other things start showing up. Severe cases of eczema, you know, acne, uh, you know, dry scalp, all of these things that we think are just normal, but actually they're connected to what we are doing or not doing for our bodies and for our overall health, right? I had a client one time, uh, just really had bad migraines and bad uh, digestive issues. And so we experimented. We say, okay, let's just take away this food for a period of time, this category of food, and see how it impacts you. You want to know what she found out? She found out every time she had excessive amount of dairy and then gluten, she had migraines and digestive issues. I'm not saying that's everyone's thing. But what I am saying is that she accepted migraines and digestive issues as normal when it didn't have to be. And that is what my job, that is what my heart is to do from the physical health area is to empower you to see that you do not, listen to me, you do not have to accept things as normal when actually they might not be normal. I want to give you back the power actually that you have and that's where the empowerment comes from to learn the tools necessary to help you be healthy and thrive in all areas of, their li of your life. Um, I don't want people to ever be self-reliant on me, like reliant on me to help them. Like I, I want to coach and I want to journey with people for their whole lives in all these areas if they would let me, right? That's what I love to do and I love to journey with people. But I do want people to empower themselves to go forth in certain things, to empower themselves to know what coconut milk is best and all these things, right? To empower themselves to know, how do I you know, manage my stress more effectively? 
those different things. So the seven different pillars of health that I believe are my heartbeat, I believe that we really need to start and care about. In the first pillar, right, of the holistic well-being is physical health. And then I believe there's seven different areas we need to look at. Nutrition, what we're eating, starts with food. Exercise, our movement. Uh, stress, stress management. And our, we are overly stressed, both mentally and physically in this world. Sleep, we need to sleep more. We need to sleep more. Uh, digestion and our intestinal tract. That is one of the most important aspects of your body in Far too often it's ignored or we're not recognizing what we're doing to it. Natural solutions for your health, so reducing your toxic load by using more natural things like vinegar to clean, like castile soap, like essential oils, and so forth, right? Like apple cider vinegar. And then this actually is very much linked to your physical health and is linked to all these other areas, is your mindset and your habits. Often we are just operating with a certain mindset and habit that was created over time that may not be true, that is not serving us, but we, it's just a pattern, it's a routine. So one thing I do often in my own life is really sit and ask myself, what is my mindset and habits around each area, each of these areas? And actually I'm in the season of really working through my financial health, what's my mindset and habits around that? How do I manage money? What do I think about money, right? But very, like a few years ago, I was asking myself those same questions around physical health. What do I think about food? How do I interact with food? What do I think about stress? All these different things, right? And so I really want to encourage you as you're listening to this, ask yourself in the area of physical health, when you're thinking about nutrition, when you're thinking about exercise, stress, sleep, digestion, toxic load, and natural products and solutions, and your mindset and your habits, which of these seven areas do you know that you need to work on, that you need support around, that you really have an action actually in your head, but you haven't implemented it? And just commit today to starting that. Uh, I'm about to, at the time of this recording, help uh, my community online through a seven-day healthy body challenge, which will hopefully be available even after. So definitely uh, check that out um, on my website and in my groups. But really helping people to take simple action steps in these areas of physical health. Because just like we created those habits that may have not be serving us or un un are quote unquote unhealthy, it took a while to create them. So it's going to take a while to break them and it's a take a while to create new ones. So that's kind of what I journey with my clients with as well is really not saying, okay, here, you know, I'm working with you for three to six months. Let's fix everything. No, let's start and let's make that one thing you are working on that when you were done at least that period of time together, it's a new habit, right? So that's kind of where physical health and kind of what I think about that. So mental health, I believe mental health is something that every single person should look at and pay attention to. Often we look at mental health as something that Oh, we, we see the negative. We see, oh, this person's not mentally healthy. Oh, they need to go see a psychologist. When in actuality, we all have thought patterns. We all have beliefs. We all have philosophies that may or may not be serving us and may or may not be true. And so it is not just certain people that really should talk through what's going on in their mind. I think we all should. Some of us may need a little bit more uh, help from specific people who are trained in it. Some of us may need more, uh, more opportunities to talk with those people and to talk through it. But I believe our mindset and our thought patterns and our, and our beliefs will dictate our behavior in every situation. And so mindset is something that I have been exploring personally, especially in my business for the last year and a half, two years. I remember doing a session with a client one time and we were going to go through mindset and habits in regards to physical health. And I just remember sitting there and saying, I need to read through this all over and over from my mindset towards success, um, towards accomplishment, towards everything in my business, because it does not stop with just this one area. area. Mindset underlies every single area of our life. Because we make actions based on maybe they're, maybe they're, you know, habitual things like, for example, driving. 
if you know the path to drive home, you could drive there mindlessly almost, right? Well, sort of. Like subconsciously, you are thinking about where you're going, but you're not actively. And often it's those underlying beliefs kind of like underneath the water that dictate our life, dictate our how we show up in the world, that those are the ones we need to address, the root belief, the fundamental thought um, of that thing. So in regards to, say, physical health, we believe that all we need to do is eat right and exercise, sleep, and be good. And we believe that a certain pattern or certain diet or certain way of doing it is the best way. But maybe it's not. Maybe we actually need to empower ourselves to think it through ourselves. I've tried every diet under the sun. And I found a way of eating that works for me after learning why and after learning and experimenting with it. And that's what I want to do for you. I want you to stop thinking how other people are thinking and to think for yourself and to really empower yourself in every one of these areas, not just physical health, right? So your mindset is one of the key areas that I believe um, you should look at. Self-care is something I believe that is very important. Our minds are often way too overloaded. We are overloaded with information. Uh, if you're like me, I'm a super future-oriented person. I'm thinking about the future, but also the present. So my mind is going all the time. So the best thing for me to do sometimes is take a weekend off and just journal, just pray, just do something that's revitalizing, rejuvenating, and renewing. So that's my version of self-care for my mind. And like this past weekend, it was just really busy and I didn't have a chance to do that as much. And I could tell the difference. So this morning I made some extra time to do that because I know that when my mind's kind of clear and in order, I can kind of go for it. And one of the best ways to do this and practice this is it is something called morning pages. It's, it was created by the author of The Artist's Way where each morning you pick amount of time or amount of pages you want to write and you just write out your thoughts. You write out what you're thinking. You write out what you're feeling. I'm a big journaler in period and that's actually how I pray often is writing out my prayers. But before that, I just get all my thoughts out. And I feel so much clearer. And actually, some of my biggest inspirations, excuse me, dreams and thoughts about the future about what I'm involved in and for my own life have come out of that time. So some, sometimes it's like, to me, my most prized possessions are not just the books I buy, but my journals, because when I go back and read them, I'm like, man, I thought of that. That's awesome. Uh, oh, wow. That's what I was going through during that period. So I believe what we're thinking has a lot to say about who we are, what's going on in our life. And sometimes the best way to get clear on that is just to write it. And so, yeah, so I think we all need to define mental health. We need to look at our mindset, um, care for ourselves, And also, some, you know, if we need to seek professional help, there's no shame in that. There's a reason why psychologists, psychiatrists, all these different, and therapists are, are trained because they know that often there are situations in people's lives that create certain thought patterns that aren't serving them. And they are trained to understand that and to help us get to the healthier version of ourselves in our mind and in our life. So there's absolutely no shame in seeking professional help. All right. So definitely, again, so physical health, mental health, emotional health. So when we think of emotions, what comes to your mind? Okay. When you think of emotion, what comes to your mind? Probably women, probably that time of month, probably high strung, probably anger, probably fear, probably happy, probably joy. There is an array of thoughts when it comes to emotions and there's an array of emotions that come in everyday situations. So our emotions, so what we feel or how we respond in our mind or in our, in our feelings towards a certain situation or stimuli is something that not to be ignored. Because I often believe that our emotions are telling us something that is happening with inside of us, right? And so it's really important that we dig into that. We own that, we process it, and understand if this emotion is true or not, and then understand if it's something we should be feeling if we, and, 
and it's something that we should act upon because yeah, I believe our emotions dictate to us what we should do. But at the same time, we shouldn't just rely on our emotions, but they are telling us something. So when you're fearful of a certain situation, if you're fearful of say, uh, you're a student in college and you know that this one exam is gonna help you get an A or not in this class and you're feeling anxious and you're so afraid. Okay, so why are you feeling so afraid? Oh, well, maybe it's because I wanna get the A. But more importantly, why do you wanna get the A? Well, I just wanna do my best. But okay, so why do you wanna do your best? And often when you go deeper, 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 you find that there's an underlying reason why someone is striving for the best. And it's not, I believe we all should strive for the best. I am definitely a high achiever. But for me, that student was me that I just described. And for me, I know that there was a period in my life that what I achieved, I connected to my worth. So if I did not achieve a high grade or did not achieve the best in something, then who am I? Right? And that happens more often than we know it. Right? And so we'll either feel happy or sad or excited when we have, when we have a certain situation that is important to us. I was talking with uh, someone else, a client I've helped through. Uh, she wanted to start her own, her own coaching practice as well. And we, such a sweet moment, but we just talked about grief and grief in regards to loss of any kind. So often when we think of grief, we think of someone who passed away. And that, that is grief that you need to go through, need, you need to mourn. But it's not just when someone passed away. When I believe, we were talking about this, that whenever someone, some, someone loses something that was important to them, that is where grief comes in. So if you were going for a certain promotion, or if you were hoping that whatever, this product came out, the new iPhone came out like on your birthday, whatever it is, and you get upset when that doesn't happen, you're grieving it. And grief manifests itself in anger and sadness, all these different ways. But more so than what you're, fe what you're feeling is share sharing that, hey, this is important to someone. So let us learn that to care for ourselves with these positive and negative emotions to process them, but also stop judging others as much. And understand that when someone is responding to certain situations with certain very strong emotions, or maybe very apathetic emotions, there is something that has happened or is happening. And as people who should care for other people, just try not to judge, try not to judge yourself as well, but try to also just take the emotion as is and help that person get through it. Because sometimes there's no solution. You just need to feel it and acknowledge it. Right, so I definitely think we need to kind of look at what emotions are. That's kind of something we'll be going through on this podcast, as well as looking at common positive ones, common negative ones, and how to respond, what they may be telling us, and then how to make goals or, or pursue the emotions that we're feeling more like. How do you want to feel? And so there's a great uh, uh, concept here, something by Daniel Laporte called the desire map, that talks about that talks about rather than making goals based on what you should do, how do you want to feel? And I remember going through that session one time with Annette Stevenson. She's a, she's an audiologist here, but also a business transformative coach. And I just remember the lifestyle and livelihood section. And I remember two words that came out for me that was just so empowering and so freeing was that, in my lifestyle and livelihood, I want to feel secure and I want to feel successful. And so up to now, that's how, what the, 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 that's the, what, that's how I want to feel. So when I say I go like, I want to share oils with this many people. I want to coach this many clients. I want to reach this much income. That really is not at my actual goal. What my actual goal is what I want to feel. I want to feel successful and I want to feel secure. Secure in who I am, secure in being taken care of, all those things. So you see the difference there is that actually 
what appears to on the outside as like Brianna is just a high achiever. Like Brianna like wants to use, you know, Oh, she's doing all this. It's like, yeah, but I'm going to tell you, actually, I want to achieve those things because I want to feel a certain way. Right. So looking at those emotions are so, so important. Um, yeah. If you haven't checked out the desire map book, definitely do so. Um, and then the next is spiritual health. So, so far we talked about physical, mo- emotional, and mental. Now we talk about spiritual health. This is something that you may or may not disagree or agree with me from this point on, and you may or may not listen, and that's totally fine. But when I'm thinking about spiritual health, I am a Christian, and that is how I'm going to take this, take this portion of my podcast, of, of my business. I believe that my relationship on our relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, is the most important area of our health that we need to pay attention to. Because for me, it was not until I got in check with God and understand that God wanted me to be physically healthy. God was, God was putting everything in front of me, but I was holding myself back that things actually shifted. It is my relationship with God that led me to start Madewell, because Madewell is based off of the Bible and my, well, I believe God is, was telling me that he wanted to make me well and he wants me to help people, help partner with him in making people well. I believe that Everything that we want to learn in all seven of these areas, we can find through Jesus and in the Bible. That's just my belief, and that's how I'm going to take this section. But I have also reason why I really want to share this is because I'm going to, we're going to talk about why Jesus, among other options. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some key things, I believe, of the Christian faith that we all should have and that we're not perfect. I'm not saying I'm the most perfect Christian in the world. I'm not saying that I represent Jesus fully and completely in his image, but I'm trying, right? But some of the three things, that, three things I believe that every should be a part of everyone's discipleship or growth or mentorship in their relationship with God is communion, meaning we are communing with God. Our relationship with him is most important. Then our community our relationship with one another, both locally, internationally, and so forth. And then commission. Our mission to this world is to bring God's kingdom and to help people know him. And how that shows up, I believe I'm, I believe I'm fulfilling that mission right now as I'm talking to you on this podcast, as I'm working in Madewell, as I do all the other things that I do, right? And so there's a general calling that Christians do have, and then there's a specific, but it's all a part of his commission. Right. And one of the most beautiful things is one of my first health coaching clients, because I'm very holistic in nature, came to me about nutrition. But then eventually we talked a lot about her spiritual health and how important that was for her and how that changed her life. And she just showed up differently in the world. And then she went on to start her own ministry. And I was able to do some like life coaching with her through that and um, sharing my own experience in the things I've done in starting my business with her and helping her in that. And that to me was like, yes, this is part of God's mission. So spiritual health is very important and I'm not going to not talk about it, but I am going to talk about it from the point of view of Christianity. So I believe we're all spiritual beings, but I believe that the spirit that we should connect with is God and his Holy Spirit. All right. So we talked about those. Those are the four main areas that I was really kind of introduced to when I did the program called First Place for Health, which is a Christian um, weight loss health program that says we need to love our Lord, our God, with all our heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. So physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. But the last three areas is something that I truly believe comes underneath that. may not be necessarily in that verse, but you see throughout the Bible and you see throughout our lives. And that's relational, financial, and vocational. I believe if we are healthy in these areas, we're going to be healthy in the other ones as well. And these ones have a little bit more, they deal with us, but they deal with a lot of other people as well. So relational health, again, your relationship with God is really important. Your relationship with yourself, that is really important. How you view yourself, how you treat yourself, how you interact with yourself says a lot about what you think about yourself and can really prevent you from really showing up well in all these areas of your health and life and thriving, right? Your relationship with your family and friends, we are relational beings. And more so than just wanting to chat with someone online or you know, talk to someone 
uh, you know, when we're working out, we want deep relationships. We want to know that we belong. We want to know that we're loved and cared for and that nothing can shift that. And sometimes things do shift. And, you know, our family and our friends, we don't always mesh well with them. Things happen. But if it is something that's important to you, that goes back to, again, what I was talking about, going through that inventory guide. If relational health is something very important to you, that means you cannot ignore it. If you do not have a good relationship with a cousin or a sibling or a friend and you want to fix it, well, that means it's important to you and you're dissatisfied in it. So pay attention to it, right? But then also one of the areas that I think in relational health is our local and international community. If you go back into uh, history, as well as even the Bible, community and being identifying yourself as one nation, as a neighborhood, as a place, as a people was very important. You hardly identify. You said, I'm a person, but, you know, when people were fighting in wars, they're fighting for the country. They identify with their country. They identify that they're a part of that country and they care about the country. So there's this local and there's also this international sense of belonging and relationship in the local international community. I'm from the Cayman Islands. I identify myself as Caymanian. I care about Caymanians, but I also understand that Caymanians are one, one ethnicity, one nationality among many. And the beautiful thing is about in the Cayman Islands, there's about over 140 something countries represented. So I can't just say, I just want to hang out with Caymanians, right? I have to also say, how can I care for all these nationalities within my local community? So I have the privilege of caring for the international community within the local community. Right. And so, you know, when things happening, like right now, you know, this, the, the hurricane that hit Texas is very, very big and people are flocking towards helping them because we recognized we could, we could easily say, Oh, we don't need to pray for them. Like people got it. Oh, we don't need to give to them. But most of us, our hearts, we just can't because actually we care about others more than ourselves. Well, sometimes, right. But that's just going to tell you that we are very much relationally and we are connected to human beings around the world and how can we do a better job of fostering that relationship so hope to really explore that uh a little bit on this uh on this podcast and so because for me i'm really super relational and you know as things grow in my business my list my group i'm like when i find someone i don't like know like i know their name obviously it appears but i i've never had a conversation with them in some way it feels wrong because for me that is how I show up. I love relationships. I love talking with people. I love learning their story and it makes me thrive. So that's why I really love that in my job that it's based on relationships, you know, whether I'm doing the oils, whether I'm doing um, coaching, ministry, all these same things like I'm relational. <laughs> So I really encourage you in the areas that we have talked about relationally, really ask yourself what area, what relationship do you really want to pay more attention to spiritually? Where are you at with your relationship with God mentally? What is your thought pattern that you really want to work through emotionally? Is there a certain emotion that comes up in a certain situation that you really uh, want support around? And then we talked about physically already. And so we're coming down to the last two, financial health. No matter who you are or what situation you're in, we need to be financially healthy so we can live, we can live the life that we enjoy, that we desire that is with freedom, purpose, and joy. So a lot of times this takes our defining what money is for us. It takes mindset and what is our relationship money? How do we view money? How do we, then how do we manage money? What is our management of money? How do we multiply money? And multiplication is very much biblical wealth principle and it's something where I know that for me, right now I'm reading a book called The Seven Money Types and talking about uh, discovering how God programmed you to manage money. And I'm definitely more of an Isaac or someone who is more of a discipline where I'm trying to maximize it to its utmost potential. I'm a restorer. I want to say, okay, something isn't working well. How can we maximize it? How can we get the most potential out of it for the little bit of money that we... Um... Police just wrote that. For the little bit of money that we may have in a particular situation, how can we maximize it to do the most good? How do we multiply it? 
you know, you're putting in money for your pension and, you know, for retirement. It's like, how do you maximize that? So I think this is something that a lot of people often ignore personally, but also if you're running your own business, you can't run away. And that's been my journey. I was an accountant before I became a full-time coach. And although I, you know, knew how to manage other people's money, I don't think I managed myself as much as mine as much as like, kind of like, oh, I'll have enough income to meet my expenses. Great. Enough income to save. Great. But not really saying like, well, how do I spend money? How do I manage it better? What do I actually think about now that I have to, I'm in kind of in charge of how much money I make in a way. How do I actually view it? Do, am I viewing it from an abundance mindset? Am I viewing it from a scarcity mindset? So all of this stuff really is something I've been exploring and I feel so much more empowered now to be able to be financially well to be able to enjoy the money that I make, to enjoy saving, to enjoy spending, and all these different things. So defining our relationship with money, looking at our mindset, looking at how we manage money, and looking how we multiply it is some very key things. And I have a current uh, client who's kind of an you know, is entrepreneur as well in multiple areas, and they invest. And just, you know, we were talking, uh, we were talking a couple of weeks ago and just, the investment game is tough. I mean, that's what I'm doing with my time, with my money, like this business, but investing, it's like your money can either multiply very quickly or it could go away like that. So what we were talking about is just working on their mindset. Like how do we create healthy boundaries for you in your mind? How do we condition your mind for success so that you can manage your money well and so you can multiply it well, right? So a lot of these concepts, whether you're an investor, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're just doing your personal finances, apply. And so it's very important for us to look at this area, and we'll definitely be exploring that uh, more so throughout this podcast. And then the last area is your vocational health. Each of us, I believe, have a beautiful calling, and that's what vocation means, calling. And it can be different from your occupation. Occupation is mainly your job. It can be one and the same. But I believe we all feel that there's something deep within our heart we're made to do. And I recently uh, finished a series called Catalyze Your Purpose, a seven-part series. And in that, I talk about seven Ps around that. And how do you explore, how do you discover, pursue, and thrive in your purpose? And one of those things was discovering who you are as a person, knowing your unique shape. And shape is kind of a, there's many other, other tests you can do. I'll talk about those in a bit. But Shape is kind of, a, it's a spiritual ministry assessment test called, where you look at your spiritual gifts, your heart, your abilities, your personality, and your experience. And the personality and who you are as a person is a key indicator, right? It does, it does help, but it's not the only thing. So that's why we go look at all these other areas. But, you know, there's other tests such as uh, the Myers-Briggs um, Meyer -Brig, Myers -Brig test. Uh, there's the Enneagram. There's the Strength Finders. Uh, and then there's even for, you know, the spiritual gifting part in calling is the APEST, which means a pop, the five-fold ministry, APEST, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers. So there's a bunch of different other tools to help you with that. So uh, definitely check the ones I mentioned out, as well as go to my blog, madewell345.com, to look at the seven-part series uh, around this. And the second part is after looking at who you are as a person, is looking at your, your passion and looking at what are the things that you're passionate about. When you usually think about X, Y, and Z, what do you feel, right? And what comes up? And what could you like do for, what would you do for your whole life for free? Like that's kind of indicator of what you're passionate about, right? The next thing is potential, like discovering the potential within. Like a very great book that kind of started this purpose journey and thoughts for me was around as Maximize Your Potential by Dr. Miles Monroe. And he wrote many books on leadership and purpose and potential. And an awesome quote, I can't quote it exactly, but an awesome quote from him talks about every person like on this earth pretty much was created because there is a, and it, there's a purpose that demanded their existence on this planet. Like God created us each for a purpose that demanded our existence. And for me, like I just knew I couldn't, couldn't argue with that. I had to pursue my, and, um, my coaching business, right? I just had to. And that's really what I want to help people do is, thrive in their purpose as well and discover that. And so I journey with clients in that area as well. Um, and then the fourth one was push through fear. 
fear is going to come up when you ever you're about to do a breakthrough about to move towards something that you're called to fear happens daily if not every minute and so it's definitely something that I work through personally and help my clients work through like why is that fear showing up and how can we push through that in a way such as knowing your why setting realistic and smart goals and so forth then the fifth is creating a purpose plan and that's just really like how are you going to go ahead and start really pursuing that purpose? Like if it is to start a blog, what's your first step? Is it really figuring out what your blog's mission is about? What the vision is? Then is it buying the domain? Where are you at? Oh, maybe you have that, but maybe it's starting to uh, adding more blogs more regularly sort of thing. And then the next one is promotion plan. How are you going to share and promote your purpose? Promote, promote that thing, regardless of if it's for money or not. How are you going to invite others into it? Because I don't know about you, but when I'm excited about something, you know, it's going to be everywhere because I believe it's something worth sharing. And so if there's something you're creating or something you're doing that's worth sharing, how are you going to promote that? And don't feel weird. Don't get, don't get weird. Like, oh man, like, but I don't want people to think I'm selling or I don't, I don't want people to make it about me. But if you truly believe what you're doing can help others, you, it's actually an injustice to not share it. So share it, Right. And then the last thing is how do you process how it's been going and how do you wait patiently, right? Because although we are, we're making motions, it's like you're planting seeds and you're, you're, making, you're making steps, but you might not get to your result right away. So how do you actively wait? How do you still take um, steps, but don't quit because it's not where you want it to be, right? And the same thing with my journey in regards to my career. Like once I knew like I wanted to do health coaching, I eventually, I still worked for a while and I just took a less demanding job and then I went part-time and now I'm doing this full-time and it's not perfect, but I'm making steps towards it. Right. And so it's not going to happen in a day, whatever it is you're doing, whether you want to start something new, whether you just want a different position in, in your uh, firm, what is it? If you want to, you know, get promoted. It doesn't happen in a day. So what steps do you need to do to get there? Uh, and this is something I help a lot of clients with as well. I, you know, again, I do a little business coaching and help other health coaches and women just get very clear on their target market, their mission and how to, what are the next few steps for them? And it's actually something I do often also with uh, my doTERRA team because so doTERRA is something really great that I don't just share about essential oils um, and empower those who want to use them. I share and empower those who want to share them. And so I have uh, some different leaders on my team who say, I really want to share these oils and integrate this into my, my business or create it as a separate thing where, oh, I, maybe I just want to get my oils for free, or maybe I want to create an extra source of income. So really helping empower them to walk in that and to really thrive in that. And so, yeah, I mean, if you're interested in that, or if you're interested in help around your own, like pursuing your own purpose, or uh, if, you want, if you love essential oils and want to join my team, that's awesome too. Um, and then I recently started uh, Christina Pineda of the Art Nest Creative Studio in Cayman, launch a Entre Circle, like an entrepreneur's membership community, which has been so great to see other people see how when you're affirmed in the passion you're called to, the thing you're called to, the purpose you feel like you have, how that just opens the doors. And so thanks so much for listening. I really, I just encourage you to really reflect on this podcast and the seven areas we talked about, physical health, mental, emotional, spiritual, rel relational, vocational, and financial. And ask yourself, what is one step you can move forward in that so that you can become more satisfied and you can grow? And again, be sure to sign up for um, my mailing list where I'll get, give you just a little exercise and tutorial on how to kind of identify which areas you really want to start working with. And if you are a woman and... Um, you're looking for some more community and support around that, join the Healthy and Thriving Women group on Facebook. Uh, but stay tuned. I just, uh, I, I kind of share in different places, right? Instagram, my blog, now this podcast, uh, my Facebook group and my email list too. So even if you're not a woman and you're like listening and you're like, I want to stay up to date, I want to grow, uh, definitely stay on my mailing list and definitely we keep listening in, to the podcast as well as reach out, you know, just be, so I do coach women, but I also coach men. I have like two or three male clients right now, but you know, so, but the group online is just for women. That's it. So if you are a man, you know, you could reach out to see if you need some support in that. So that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for some upcoming ones where what I'll do from here is kind of 
focus on an area of health for a particular period of time and invite uh, some other, you know, other women, other entrepreneurs, other people just to speak into those specific areas as well. So stay tuned. There's exciting things have planned and uh, definitely keep listening to the podcast and definitely subscribe, share it with people and just let me know, keep your comments going on the feed and just let me know of any questions at all. All right. See you in the next one. Bye.